Alright, so we're back to Inventor Studio. And if I had assigned materials to the objects in the part files, they would come through here. But because I didn't do that, everything is just kind of flat. So what I can do is I can go back to my surface files. Now I can pick on items. Um, so let's say I wanted to be metal, polished aluminum. I can pick on it and hit this button here. And that'll put that, that, that style, that material, on that object. What's it called? Apply? Yeah, apply sort of stuff. Is this actually currently applied at that time, or? It, it's just here in, in this in this render, in, in, uh, As a sample, or as a preview? Yeah, it, it's just here in this, um, what is this? In this file, in, in the assembly. If we went back to the part file, it wouldn't be there. Individual parts. So you're, yeah. yeah, you're actually applying it to it. Yeah. Right now, okay. It's not like a preview or something. If no. you go to the part file and apply it, it would have come it would come through here also. Yeah. So, let's see what else. Well. I'm just kind of applying my materials to it. <coughs> so now I've got a bunch of materials on it. If I did a render, I put a That's actually a little too shiny, that lighting style. So we'll pick a different. <laughs> so I got polish is really killing me. So. Luminous. Make those machines instead. That looks a little better. 
So once I kind of figure out the basics of it, I'm going to turn on my animation timeline. And since we already had positions for an open and a closed position, I can go to the position reps. I'm going to start at the master, end at that, and take five seconds to do it. Start at zero. Zero and at five. We're going from master to position one. Say okay. So now when I run the timeline, it's doing that. But remember on this we had it where it was adjusting both the position of this block and the distance there. We probably want it to move this back and then adjust that. <coughs> so, what I might want to do is come back to my uh, my representations. Go to position one. So, is this one? Should that even show thread at all? What? On that? Yeah, when it's closed, it's got threads out. change that back to 0.18. And then I'll do a new representation. <clears throat> so it's going to be This one to zero, and then eighteen should be two point Now it has master, position one, position two. Should I make the little clip come up? Yeah, and, and I've already got a constraint on that one. But I can, we can we specify that one separately. So now I'll go back into that environment. Now it slides open there, and then that moves back. <clears throat> now it's what, do we, what else do we want to happen? So before this one slides, we need to lift that clip. So let's actually just slide this over a little bit. It's so not this position. We're going to go into that clip. Animate that constraint. Go from that to zero. And we're going to end at 0.5 seconds. Uh, 
Let's go back down. Yeah, so can we get here? Maybe we'll try to set out a couple more. So out here we're gonna make that animate from zero back down to negative thirty eight point five. And then while this is happening, I want this to be turning. that while this is going here, I also want this handle angle to be turning. So animate, specify it's going to start at 6 and end at 8, and it's going to go Shouldn't it be moving too when it comes all the way back? Shouldn't what be moving? The, the rod. This? Yeah. No, because this locks it in, and the threads on the inside are what move. That's what makes it fast now. So it moves that over, it locks that back down, this turns, and it moves the screw there. It's going the wrong way. Right. It was tightening it, but moving that back. Turning right. Yeah. So that first one doesn't have left. a thread in it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it should be going left, but if it's loosening. But isn't this. Is it left hand thread? Yeah, that's left hand thread. <laughs> no, it is, right? <laughs> you look at this. And actually, it should be going the other. Because it should be. Right should be tightening. Yeah. So in this case, it's with a right hand thread, but it is a left hand thread if you look at the drawing. Um, right. Left hand thread. So. <laughs> this should be going with, with a left hand thread because it's turning the nut. As long as we're turning the nut right, and that that would be loosening it. We're not turning the screw. <laughs> so that needs to be changed to negative.
eight, and you have a ten point. Now, wanna, you're changing that position. Don't you want to go from, uh, from ten twenty to uh, zero? It shouldn't matter, but I don't know why it's because of where you because where you put your plane at. That's color black. start where it is. Still wanting to go clockwise. Um, okay, I should have gone from 1080. There's just something with the studio that's that's so messed it up. It's, it's losing the those constraints are flipping. Look what I did. I made it to the surface to a line. And so I flipping it, it was still under that constraint. So let me edit that. Change that one to the surface. Edit that. surface to line? Yep, I'd actually done that. There. Now it's surface to surface. Now it won't mess up. Do it to lock to edges. That's why. Because when it was flipping, it was still the constraint was still good. But now that the surface to surface, it's not going to be able to do that.
so, so you kind of so that's why you really want to watch what constraints you put on, and trying to use two surfaces if you can instead of just a surface and an edge. So edge is really just to line things up, really, right? Oh, an edge is if you want to be able to rotate around that thing or something, but right. it's really better if you have flat surfaces, use those flat surfaces. It, it makes it a lot easier. Because an edge doesn't have a direction, so you so a, a mate and a flush are basically the same thing. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, use, use the surfaces when you can. So now we get this here. You can hit the record button here, or you can do the render animation. <clears throat> we're going to output it. We're, here we need to tell it the file first, so we're going to tell it, let's do it an AVI, and we're already telling it the size here. Telling it we want it as a video. If we told it as an image sequence, then we can save it as JPEGs or PNG and do one for each frame. So if you're going to do, um, if you're going to do like Adobe Premiere or something for or After Effects to make your video, instead of having to to make a video that's compressed and then bring that in and then try and use that compressed video, if you make just still images, then you can bring it in and. Um, and, and use just that image sequence for the animation. Sometimes that works better. Also, if you just do a series of images, then you can make an animated GIF. So like the, the pictures that, that show the animation, or that, that move, you do, do that. Um, again, we can set the, 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 the NALs, anti-aliasing. Uh, the range we want, so we don't want to go to eight seconds. And if you had done it backwards, you could tell it to reverse and have it play the opposite way. So play from the end back to the beginning. So if you had it all together and you made it come apart, you could tell it to reverse so that way it could start it apart and come together. So you can actually then do a whole animation of it break it apart and then come back together. Yeah, because you do one, go apart, then you just do it again in reverse come back. And then we hit render. Now it's going to ask us what compression we want. Um, so I can do 5.1. Now it's going to go through and render it for each of those frames. Just like before where it did one frame, now it's doing it a bunch. And we can sit here. And while it's doing this, you can't touch it. If you touch it, it will crash. The whole computer? Or? Yep. Because right now it's taking 100% of your CPU and 100% of your RAM. And 100% of the graphics card. Oh, you should have brought up uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, control, delete, the... Uh... No, because that takes resources and it needs to do this. <laughs> you just hit it, go. Make sure you have nothing else open. You don't have an inter, internet browser, anything open. Just have Inventor open by itself, and then run it. Um, these two little, the two little boxes you see screwing around, those are your, your processors. So if you had a quad core, you'd have four of those boxes going around. And it's pretty much a one for one. If you double the RAM, you double the speed of the rendering. <laughs> what? Yeah, you should go for it. Um, if you, um, <coughs> I just lost what I was saying. Um, I'm ready to die. Um, I was going to say something next. It'll come to me later. That's on video, right? Yep. So that's doing that 32 
No, this is doing it at 15 frames a second. 15 frames? Yeah. Um, on, the, on the render box, I told it at 15 frames a second. Because 14 is kind of the cutoff. Um, some people can't see it down to 10. But for most people, 14 frames a second is, is smooth enough. Um, and so 15 is okay. If you want to be, make sure it's smooth or you've got a lot of action going, then you want to bump it up uh, higher. But then that also means that if you go from 15 to 30 frames a second, you have twice as many frames. Yeah. And it's a minute left. So some of the other options here, like fade, that lets you fade components in and out. So if you want to hide a component, like if you had something that was in a case, you'd have the case fade out to show all the stuff inside. Can you actually fade the whole? Yeah, and you can fade multiple things at once. Like the whole thing, like have it fade in and then you just start moving it back then too? Yeah, because you just have to fade each component. All at the same time. Kind of yeah, you can see by 50 frames a second, second, it's making big jumps yeah. between. What kind of what company would do something like this? Any company? A lot of companies. Um, if you wanted to, to sell something, you wanted to make some, some marketing stuff, you could do this. Uh, remember on Monday I showed you Kickstarter, where you just have a concept. So a lot of times companies, will, if they have a concept, they'll do some renderings first before to actually start production, they'll get some concept things, and they give it to marketing. Because marketing will say, "We want this," and so engineering will make up some some concept draw, drawings, concept models, give it back to marketing, and say, "Is this what you want?" Um, they'll take it back to the customer, and they'll talk to customers and see if that's yeah, that's what they want, that's what they want it to look like, or if they want changes to be made. So we're not wasting time making physical prototypes, because um, you can do it just from this. You can kind of come up with an idea, do, some, do a quick rendering, without doing all the formal drawings. And then once the customer comes back and says, oh, change this, change this, you can do those changes, give them another one. And then when they say that, yeah, they like the, what it looks like, and then you can do all the formal drawings and figure out the tolerances and all the GDT and, and and making all the drawings. I thought it went the other way. I thought it went uh, engineering. Uh, manufacturing then the, the no customers. Oh. It, marketing is the one that tells you what to do. Sometimes engineering will have an idea, but unless marketing buys off on it and says there's customers for it, it's not going anywhere. So how would they know if it's good, even going to work without even being being? They, the that, that's why they talk to engineering, and so engineering will, while they're doing the model and figuring out how it's going to fit and, and stuff, they can do this. Without having to calculate all the tolerances and and things and, and get kind of what's going to look like, and then they can come back and if they after the customer says yes, we like it, then you can come back and make sure that everything's going to work right, or do you need to tweak some things or not because whatever. it's not not a big project. If it's a big, huge project like a building or something, then it would have to go. Well, same thing. You, if, in architects, they start with a basic floor plan, floor plan yeah, no. and they kind of get the basics in, show it to the customer. Customer does no, I don't like that. Let's change this, and then they kind of get to a floor plan that they think they like. If they're doing it in like Revit, then they just do a quick rendering to show them, okay, this is what it's really going to look like inside. Do you still want this? Do you want to change it? And once the customer says yes, that that's what they want, then they do all the details, right? You don't need to do details and sections and stuff before that's what they they like it. Then you'd have to go back and change it all. Same thing I do with this room. So is there a contract, like say they do that, there's a contract already written down saying that they're going to... Uh, no. No, it's just... No, they don't pay unless they like it. That's how it usually is. I you work for free until the, until the final thing's done. Uh, like, uh, um, but they're like, when I did this, the remodel, I gave them a, a drawing showing it of how I wanted things to be, and they, had no, they couldn't see it. They couldn't understand what I wanted to do. Uh, 
Who, who was that? <laughs> the D? <laughs> you know, I also see a lot of that, like the animations and stuff like that, on like, the uh, consumer electronics yeah. show. Yeah. They have something new out, and then they'd be showing the renderings that they're doing before they even made the product and stuff like that, and showing the different details. Yeah. Well, I, I had something like this that I had done, and they couldn't really see what that was going to look like. I mean, you, you can kind of see that, yeah, there's some desks and stuff, but once they did the video of it, and, and the animation of going through the lab, they're like, okay, yeah, let's let's do that. We'll spend the money on that. So, it, it's in order to, to show to the people that aren't in the field, that, that don't do this all the time, they can't see a, an orthographic drawing or, or an elevation or, or, or a plan view and, and know what it's going to look like. I should, probably should have had some extra space on the end. So why is it that like it slides all the way to the back and then the normal surface spins? Because when it's sliding, it's just sliding through these. And that doesn't need to spin until this is locked into a group. And this is actually based on a project that I did for my first metal shop class. I actually had to make that, except it wasn't with the bevel corner. So I had to do it by hand. Knocks the major increments, then the handle does the fine adjustment on the thread for, for that actual grip. Cool. <clears throat> no, right, no idea is original. You're always taking what you've done somewhere else and tweaking it. Questions? Wow. <clears throat>